Today we're going to take a standard photo and make it look like a cool old vintage image in just a couple of steps. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing a really cool image. We've got uh, this great image of best friends. So image won one of our best friend contests last week. If you guys want to have your image edited on Florin, just enter our contest because we have them every single week. And today we're going to be taking this uh, this image and turning it into even more of like this cool vintage effect, kind of getting the feeling across a little bit more. So we're going to talk about feeling, we're going to talk about working with color, and we're going to talk about like bringing it all together and some of these elements that are present in those kind of like, you know, the raw lifestyle, like happy emotional shots, and then how to actually do those in this photo. So let's go ahead and get into it. So to begin with, we have quite a bit of a vignette going on here. Uh, it's just quite a bit darker around the edges and uh, that might have been done in post-production. Either way, no big deal. What we're going to do is just kind of lighten that up a little bit for this effect. Now you don't have to do this effect on every one of your photos. I'm just going to show you how to do it if this is the look you want. So let's go to a curves adjustment layer. And what we're going to do is I'm going to click and drag this quite a bit brighter. There we go. Something like, like that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hit command I on my layer mask and then with a really large brush, um, I'm going to paint with white right here around the edges just as much as I need to. And when I paint white on a layer mask, basically this makes whatever was, um, you know, whatever was invisible, it makes it back visible. So it turns a black layer mask into a white layer mask just around the edges because we don't need the white, sorry, we don't need it to be brighter here in the middle because you can see it's going to get way overexposed. So just around the edges is where I wanted to do it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of color correction too. Just This is a little bit more advanced, but it's just going to help the colors look a little bit better. We're just going to go in here to our curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go to my green channel. We're going to pull up our greens just a little bit. There we go. And we're going to pull up our reds just a little bit as well. It's going to give it kind of that natural feel so it won't be as like uh, stale a little bit. There we go. Very nice. So that's a pretty good start. Now the next thing we want to do is kind of figure out a way to enhance this uh, sunrise or sunset that's going on behind our subjects here. We want this to like really take over the image because that's what's going to get a lot of the style from the image. So to do so, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to curves again. I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit, but most of what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some color into it. So if you want that like really nice sunset or sunrise image, what you want to do is focus some like oranges, reds, and yellows right around that area and really bring up the saturation in those areas as well. And that's going to help you get that image across or that feeling. So we're going to go to our red channel, kind of click and drag this up right about there, and then we're going to go to our blue channel, and I'm going to click and drag this down. So blue channel is going to, the opposite is going to put more yellow, and uh, obviously red channel puts more red in your image. So if you kind of work with them together, more red and more yellow, they combine to make orange. So that's why we're doing it. Okay, and that looks really good. It doesn't look good everywhere, <laughs> but it's not supposed to be visible everywhere. So I'm going to hit command I on my layer mask there, and now we're going to paint white on my layer mask right here, uh, especially like, you know, where the sun, sun is kind of coming through and things like that. There we go. And we'll just let it kind of fade away. Use a nice large brush and just kind of let it fade away there. You want it a little bit visible over your subjects just to see that like they get a, a touch of the color, but we really don't want to go in here and, you know, completely change their coloring. There we go. So that's why I'm using black as well as white to kind of like paint that in there. So we're getting this kind of color coming in right through there, and uh, that looks really good. It's maybe a little bit too saturated, but we're going to play with our color in just a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to do to kind of enhance this a little bit is kind of get, you know, one of those like flares going on that you really see a lot when people photograph from the sun. And uh, to do so, we're going to create a new layer, and I'm going to grab a nice like bright color here, just close to white, something like this, like a nice bright orange. And uh, with my brush tool, I'm just going to paint it right over top of this. There we go. So that's like the, the sun that's going to come through. Okay, now I know that doesn't look good right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a layer mask on this layer and we're going to click on our layer mask and go to image and down here to apply image. There we go. And you can click on this invert button or off this invert button. In this case, we're going to click off of the invert button. All right, there we go. So you can see what this did is it just kind of helped everything blend together a little bit better. Now we can change this to something like a screen blending mode. You can change it to a lightened blending mode. You could change it to a soft light blending mode. Any of these would totally work. So let's try screen. I think that actually looked uh, the best out of all three. And we're just going to lower our opacity a little bit there. So what this does is it kind of gives us a little bit of that like haze in the background. And um, if you want, let's just click on your layer mask and paint black on your layer mask. 
but that little bit of a haze can kind of like shine through and kind of like give you the feeling of, uh, of sunset, which I really like. All right, there we go. And if you want to change your layers, like if the color isn't coming through like you want it, just bring this layer down below the other one and then you'll get the haze there, but you also get this color from that layer as well. So that's a pretty cool tip. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and treat the, uh, the sides just to like bring in a little bit of that red into the rest of the image. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers. We're gonna go to our levels, and now we're gonna go to red levels, and here in my output, I'm just gonna click and drag this from the, from the left, all right to the right, just like that. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint white on my layer mask here around the edges, and this is just gonna bring a little bit of that color that we had right here uh, back to this area. The reason I don't wanna just paint on this layer, sorry, on the layer mask where, where we did this is because it's quite a bit more of an effect. We brightened it up, we added those yellows and the reds, and this is just adding a little bit of reds to our shadows, just like that. So it's just a little bit different of an effect. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. We're just gonna brighten this image up just a bit. There we go, because it should be like a nice, bright, fun image, right? And then we're gonna paint black anywhere where it's like a little overexposed. So like right over our subject's faces, it's just a little bit overexposed. There we are. Cool, that's looking really good. Now, if you wanna go ahead and do something like lowering the saturation, that's going to really help out in kind of like getting that vintage feel. And uh, you can do that really easily. Go to your adjustment layers, hue saturation, and just go here to your saturation and just kind of pull it down just a little bit. You don't wanna go too far you'll go to black and white, you know, something around here, yeah, pretty much always looks really weird. So I would just recommend pulling it down just a little bit and um, that's just gonna help it not look like so uh, over-processed in Photoshop or whatever have you. All right, that's looking really good. Next thing we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and grab a levels adjustment layer. I'm gonna pull some blues into the shadows just cause it's gonna kinda give it that like vintage feel and some of those like yellows into the highlights there. All right, and that helps out with that like nice vintage feel for the image itself. All right, and we're actually not that far from being done. So let's just shift click all those layers. I'm gonna turn this one back on. Maybe lower the opacity that just a little bit more. All right, this layer is set to screen. Yeah, that looks really good. So let's shift click all, th all those layers and I'm gonna hit Command G and we're gonna turn those off and then back on. I think it looks really, really good. Now, the last thing I might do, we already have a little bit of a lens layer here. Let's just make another one. I like it. Um, we're gonna make a stamp visible layer. So Shift, Option, Command, E is gonna make a stamp visible layer. Then we're gonna go to fil we're going to filter. We're gonna go to render and then down to lens flare. And then here on the left, pretty much where the actual like lens, where the actual light source actually is coming from, that's where we want to make our lens flare come from. So I'm gonna hit OK there. That's our light source. Now, it's way too much, right? It's way too bright, it's way too saturated, it doesn't look good, all those negative things. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and we're gonna fill the entire layer with black now. And you're like, why would you do that? Um, because we can do this really cool trick where we go to Filter and then just go to the Lens Flare right here. If you go to Filter and the very top action is always going to be the last filter you just applied. So we're gonna go to Filter, back to Lens Flare and you're gonna see it's now gonna apply that onto our black layer. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna now change this layer from normal down here to screen. So we have a lens flare, but we can turn it off and on. I can also do things like lower the opacity of the lens flare a little bit. I can add a little bit of blur to the lens flare. Let's say I wanna do a Gaussian blur to kinda of like, you know, all these um, like rings and things like that it creates. I just wanna do a Gaussian blur to kinda of make those a little bit less, less uh, obvious, I guess. All right, I'm gonna hit Command U on that layer and lower the saturation down a little bit as well so it's not so colorful. And then we're just gonna lower our saturation or our opacity a little bit more. So we have this effect in there. It, it adds to the image, but it doesn't like overtake the image. And I think anytime you're doing any kind of like effect or lens flare, or whatever have you, um, just keep that in mind. You want something that's gonna add to the image, but not completely take over the, uh, the image. Let's just put that back in this group already and uh, see what we got. So here's our before and our after. Still, like I tried to keep like the people and everything like that the same, but the emotion that they're experiencing is like happiness and laughter and things like that. Um, so to me, it made a little bit most sense to actually like bring those like, you know, the kind of like warm colors into the photo itself. And uh, yeah, I think this looks really good. Here in the very end, sometimes I'll just like to like zoom out and make sure that, you know, do I really like my colors, things like that. Um, and you can just grab a curves adjustment layer and just start playing around with your color channels 
Like if you might see that like, oh, you know what, I might have had too much red in there or not enough green or too much green or uh, whatever it is. Uh, this is where I'll go through and kind of like mess with my color channels. And this at the very end affects the image as a whole, which is really, really nice. So even all those different effects you made in there, um, you can go affect the image as a whole. And if you don't like what you did, just hit, uh, <laughs> hit undo. There we go. Let's see about putting a little bit more blue and a little bit more green in there too. All right, there we go. Yeah, I think a little bit more of that blue and a little more of the green. And let's just use our layer mask to paint away black right here where the, like, the sun is kind of coming through. There we go. That just kind of helps like balance everything out a little bit more, I think anyway. So there's a million ways to do this sort of thing, guys. And all it is is getting in here and like playing around with your colors and um, the couple things about like using this flare on the background here, um, you know, this layer that we added right there helps out quite a bit. And, uh, and then bringing up the natural vignette um, helps out quite a bit as well. So that's basically it. So there's the before and the after. And you can get in here and kind of like play around with all your colors and things like that. If I was going like a little bit more extreme, what I might do is something like this. Let's do a new layer. I'm going to go to shift delete. Hit Shift Delete, fill the 50% gray, go to Filter, Noise, and here to Add Noise. Here we go. Let's just add quite a bit of noise, and we'll change this from Normal down to Soft Light. Uh, and then I'm going to hit Command U and just kind of like lower the saturation of my noise layer, and then lower the opacity of it. So we bring in that like noise. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see that. We bring in a little bit of noise, which makes it look a little bit more like vintage film or something like that, and um, that really just does complete the effect. Uh, rather nicely. So that's about it guys. There we go. Done. Now you know how to make vintage photos of your very own. And you can go and play around on top of this. You can add even more colors and you know like blurs and things like that and you can add like textures and whatnot. Uh, but this is a good good basis on making a vintage photo and then you can just take this and go with it as far as you want. That's it. I hope you liked it. Thanks so much for watching Flurm. I'll flirm you later. Bye bye everybody. I don't know why I'm talking like this. All right, here's the anti blooper blooper because I actually wanted to do a little bit more to this photo. <laughs> we're gonna add a little bit of like light leaks or whatever. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go down here to levels. I'm gonna grab our uh, red channel and we're gonna go from the left to the right just like that. And then we're gonna go to our blue channel and pull this up. There we go. I'm gonna hit Command I on my layer mask and then just paint white a little bit there on the left. That's gonna look like a light leak there on the left. And then we're gonna do one on the right too because I just feel like it. So we're going to go to levels and then we're going to pull in, I think I'm going to pull in some like magenta. Yeah, we'll pull in a magenta. That'll look really nice. So I'm going to go back to my layers and then paint white on our layer mask right there. And that's just going to be a nice complementary color to our greens and uh, work well for some light leaks. So there we go. Thought you were getting a blooper, but you were just getting more Photoshop learning. That's how we do it. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.